Okay, running around a track with a GPS watch is usually very, very difficult. Look how good this is. This is amazing. This is multi-band GPS on the new Forerunner 955 Solar. Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to Hailing Island. Now, I recently got the Forerunner 955 Solar here. So I thought what I would do is rather than focus on a full review, I'd just focus on some of the things that I use most because you can get a full review on DC Rainmaker, Chaser Summit, Desfit, they all cover that in immense detail. And you have to be able with the Forerunner, the, the basic things like just seeing what your pace is, seeing what your distance is, seeing what your time is, it's all basically the same. And if you saw my video from a while ago, I had 24 Forerunners, well this is perhaps my 25th one. So what's interesting about this one is it's got this new multi-band GP so what I want to do is just sort of test that out and I found a grass track here eight lanes so what we're gonna do is run a, a lap in each lane moving out one by one and see if we can actually sort of see how well it does though it does have a track mode this for as it does the recent ones but I just want to test it in its normal GPS mode to see how close the actual accuracy is I've got my 945 so I'm gonna give that one a go as well and see how they compare so here's the track, rather nice grass track. It's not too bad, it's so dry at the moment. It's a bit bumpy as all grass tracks are, but a nice football pitch in the middle. So it's nicely lined out. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lanes. So here's my setup. I've got my 945 where I normally wear it on my left wrist there. And I put the 945 just through my fingers so that I've got that close as possible to the 955 without actually just being side by side by side with it and also on the same wrist. So here we are at the end of the first lap, but I'm gonna move out to lane two. Here we go, lane two. So we're now in lane three. I can always see in on the map of the 955. There is definitely a separation between the lines. Don't forget these lines are about 1.25 meters apart. So we are well within sort of the accuracy of being one side of the road to the other. Okay, come to the end of lane five. Might as well do all eight, might not. Right, let's get to lane six then. Right, last time straight, then we're done. Okay, so we're all done. That was perhaps a bit harder than I thought. It's still recovery from COVID. I've already been for like a four mile run. Got the Vimero 16s on at the moment, which perhaps aren't like the ideal shoe for a grass track. I've also, if you've seen there, I've got the stride on for some other testing to compare that with Garmin power, but that was subject of another video. Anyway, so yeah, that was all right. What I think what I'll do now is save that activity and we'll get onto the computer and have a look at it in more detail. See whether the 945 with its multi-band GPS is any better than the 945 with just the regular GPS. Usually it's got Glasnost and stuff like that as well. Anyway, right, so thanks for coming along and see you inside. Okay, so I'm just showing a replay now of the GPS track here from Garmin Connect and slowed down a bit. So you can see I started in lane one there, right on the inside of where that green marker is. And we're just sort of playing this back. And as you can see, hopefully, as I go into lane two there, I've just moved out slightly. So they aren't completely, absolutely separated, but this is quite but the one of the best gps tracks i've ever seen for this level of accuracy i mean you've probably got about a two meter accuracy here you can see as i go out each lane it is actually pretty much going out as you would expect whereas normally with the gps track we'll show you the 945 in a minute it's actually quite difficult to make out what lane you're in but you certainly you can see there that as i know on lane five sort of in the middle of the tracks that you know totally where I expected to be and if you see right at the end there, that red marker is where I finished is just right on the edge of the track so in lane eight so this is pretty amazing I would say I mean I think what you have to remember here we're not actually using the track run mode we're just using this as regular GPS and you'll know always might argue they don't even actually need GPS track mode with this one so we're just coming around the last lap here and then we'll look a bit more of the metrics in a minute Okay, so I did a bit of calculation as to what exact distance I would have run. So obviously I did one lane in lane one, so 400 meters, and I moved out to lane two. So each lane is about 7.67 meters longer than the other one, assuming that these tracks have been measured properly. Obviously being a grass track is maybe not exact, but near enough. Anyway, so the total distance I ran here in meters is 3,414, theoretically, which is 2.12 miles. Now, almost by chance, if I look at my Strava, it's actually given me 2.12 miles. So the actual distance accumulation using this multi-band GPS is also working great to uh, accurate to the nearest 0.01 mile, which is uh, on a track is uh, is pretty amazing really. I'm using the uh, Strava for Source add-in here. This is why I got my comments down here. Quite a nice little add-in. You can uh, look at what your peak cadence is, what your peak speed is as well. 
a, a peak pace here. So I did one mile at 7.37 was the best one. I'll perhaps do another video on that another time. And there's my graph there showing, you can see that I started there with the green dot in lane one and um, finished in lane eight. So if we look now at the 945 GPS part, it's actually looking too bad, is it? But what you notice first of all, that the green star and the red end are basically uh, one on top of each other. So you can't even see that they're in a different place. And if we just replay this round again, you can see that although the laps aren't doing too badly, it's a bit random where the actual tracks are. There's a bit, it goes out a bit wide here. And basically it's kind of okay, but definitely compared to the other one, it's not great. If and if we look at the metrics here, you know I said that the distance should be 2.12 miles. This is actually calculated at 2.18 miles. So it's basically 100 meters longer than it should be. So this is from the DC Rainmaker tool overlaying the two tracks. The purple line here is the 955 and the blue line is the 945. Now they both look don't look too bad, but if you look closely, that the 945 goes out a bit wide here and generally it doesn't sort of track the actual lanes as much. If we zoom right in, you can sort of see the purple lines here really hugging these lanes quite well. I mean, you have to say that both are doing pretty well here, but I think in terms of like what is the best here, definitely the 955 wins. And also the fact that it actually got the distance correct, whereas the 945 was basically 100 meters long, isn't great either. But yeah, you would have kind of take both of these, wouldn't you, for sure. Just looking finally at the speed here versus time, the purple line is the 955 and you can see that the actual sort of speed graph here i.e pace is somewhat more smoother you get like these little bumps here with the 945 so again like you would think that the pace actually just from gps is doing pretty well according to this so i hope you enjoyed this little look at the 955 gps i've got one more little track to show you where i actually ran around a sort of a caravan site with quite sort of tight tracks and let's have a look at that one as well so this is the 955 running around this Hailing Island Holiday Park. A load of sort of like little paths come roads which are very close together. You can see how well I actually tracked here overlaid to the actual base map. I mean there's hardly any separation at all between them. And you know I was turning corners quite a lot here. And there's only these um, roads are only really about 10 meters apart. So very very close together. That's pretty good. So okay, so I hope you found this interesting. I'll be sure to do some more tests with the 955, perhaps take it into a city centre and into a dense forest to see how it does there. My initial sort of impressions from the runs I've done so far under trees and near buildings is very good. So I'm hoping to be able to show that in more detail. But yeah, certainly if you're thinking about getting a 955, if it's the GPS alone, then certainly I would recommend looking into it for sure. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. Please like and subscribe and all that and see you in the next one then. Bye!